Line. I'm Adam Carolla. That's not Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Dr. Drew, board certified physician, addiction medicine specialist. But Drew is not in studio tonight. No, Drew is out in uh, Florida. He is uh, doing something for spring break and Trojan condoms. And it's basically the same old story. Somebody dropped a nickel somewhere around the country and Drew's going after it. Now, I don't know if Drew can hear me because uh, he is in Panama City or Panama Beach City or City Beach of Panama in Florida. And he's at some sort of club and he's trying to broadcast over here and he has a bad phone line. And I realize now hearing myself in an undrugged state, unlike last night, I uh, have a little swelling in my jaw. And this is why I have a little bit of heat sound because I had a tooth removed yesterday and uh, I got a, sort of a golf ball in my cheek and uh, I was thinking about something when I was uh, hanging around today I was thinking uh, what the uh, nurse told me before I went in for my uh, oral surgery yesterday she said uh, it was a nice place I went to it was a nice uh, upscale dentist and uh, they have uh, they have they had TVs up on the walls and a selection of movies you could watch and she said would you like to pick out a movie to watch during the procedure and I said uh, yeah yeah that sounds good so I walked over grabbed a movie started walking into the back into the uh, room where the procedure was going to be done and she said you may want to grab two movies and I thought hmm because I got the towering inferno here and that's uh that's two hours and ten minutes and she's like yeah you better you better pick out two, and um, I took that. I took that as a bad sign that uh, two hours was not going to cut it in the dentist chair yesterday. So you have to excuse my uh, my lisp today, but I am clear-headed. I'm not drugged like I was yesterday. I really have no recollection of uh, last night's show. I hear uh, Paul Rodriguez was on it, and uh, Dr. Drew is uh, yeah. coming to us from uh, Panama City, Panama Beach. Yeah. 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 I'm not as pissed as I can be. How about that? What's the matter, Drew? Uh, things weren't uh, as they were supposed to be, the well, way they were billed. Well, that's okay, Drew. Oh, Which, really? Well, yeah, listen, these, these things, you know, this comes with the territory. I just spent an hour struggling to get this, this uh, studio to cooperate with us, and it's just been horrible. We have a bunch of guys here working their ass off trying to make this thing work. It's, it's like trying to get some old Model T to, like, fly. Right. Well, they wouldn't. Why wouldn't they cooperate with you, Drew? Oh, well, they're cooperating. It's not the matter of cooperation. Here. It's that, that that what was supposed to have been here, none of it was here. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Like if I had known, I could have begged you for your effort. Yeah. Been no problem. All right. Well, ironically, we had it last week when we didn't need it, and then this week when we do need it. Yeah, exactly. It's gone. All right. So what? I'll be delighted to sit here on the phone. That's fine. Oh, is that is that what it is? You're on the phone right now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, good times. Yeah. Let's do it for the phone. That's fine with me. I mean, uh, unless or until we can get something else going. There's also a huge electrical storm going on here in the middle of all this. It's really quite amazing. Oh, really? Yeah. Now, w when did you fly in this this afternoon? Like an hour ago, yeah. And what what are you doing? Working tomorrow? Yeah. You know, I'm at that club you and I were at years ago. It's so bizarre coming back to the exact same class, place, same hotels, and everything. And we rented a boat here. Remember this? You and my wife went out on a boat? Yeah, that's right. Now, yeah, I, we were out there for MTV Spring Break about five years ago. Yes. It was, no, it was like seven years ago. Yeah, I mean, maybe it was seven years ago. It's incredible how much time has passed. And, I, and this place is built up, and it, it's bizarre coming back to a place, you know, where you, where you stood seven years prior and looking at how different you feel and how different things are. And then I remembered our fateful boat trip. Oh, yeah. What was wrong with our boat trip? Oh, you were complaining. Oh, Drew, that doesn't sound like me. <laughs> how how you, did you recover from your uh, surgery? Uh, I'm I'm swollen, but uh, other than that, I'm fine. Really? Did you, how long did you sleep last night? Uh, no, I, I slept until about nine fifteen this morning. I went to Good bed. At, I went to bed at two or something. You know. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, you know, it's weird about me. I was drugged up like a maniac all day long. I still come home and watch an hour and a half of TV. <laughs> no, no matter what. Uh, no, not just TV. It's uh, infomercials. Yeah, I like that. That uh, one thing. That son of a bitch with the question marks all over his goddamn suit, screaming about uh, how to get more of my tax dollars into your pocket if you want to write a novel or come yeah, out with it. A... Adam, you, you talk about those things as though everyone knows what you're talking about, as though everyone lives in that parallel universe after midnight. Look, I've never seen. I've never seen. Uh, you never saw The Shining until three days ago, you idiot. Yeah, I've, I've never seen the guy with the question marks. I've never seen your buddy with the uh, with Tommy Vu. Was that his name? All right, wait a minute. Now, well, see, this is tough because there's only one guy in that other room, which is Brian, who knows what's going on. Brian. All right, the guy, the skinny man who is dickhead. The, I know exactly who you're talking about. Oh, An well, Anderson knows because he's a night out. Anderson, Anderson stays up all night and watches TV. I actually thought it was a Bill Nye, the science guy, when I first saw him. Yeah, it looks like him. Yeah, he's, he's got question marks all over his suit. He, he stands in front of uh, the Capitol building and screams at you about uh, how you can get $250,000 to open a coffee shop a and uh, how the government will pay you $5,000 to read a novel. It's just, just crazy stuff. And, Drew, you don't know anything because you don't know anything, not because you went to college during those years or because you don't stay up at this hour. You're just one of these guys that doesn't notice anything. That's all. That's true. I, I, you're one of those guys that would notice if an uh, ant farted. Yeah, well, listen, Drew. I mean, uh, yeah, you trap. Well, here's the thing. You say you're never up, you're never this, you're never that, but what time are you going to get back to the hotel tonight? 2.30. All right, 2.30. That's late. You might, yeah, I, you might turn the TV on. TV, I do not do that. Oh, right, shut up. All right, where, 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 how, do I get, how do I get rid of him? No, 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 no. You're lucky, Drew. You're, you're arguing with me. My button, my my finger button was oh, uh, on right. the prowl. You're right. You're right. Okay, I'm at your mercy. All right, now quiet down. Yes, Mr. Kroll. Now, who are we going to talk to? Uh, Mr. Kroll, you have to operate the board tonight. All right. Yes, sir, Mr. Kroll. I'm going to press the, uh, no, I'm going to press the upper, upper panel. <laughs> yeah, upper right. panel, that's right. All right. We got a woodworking question, but I'm going to save, uh, save him for a little later. Let's talk to Erica, who's 26. Erica? What's up? I have a question about um, anal sex. Mm -hmm. I, I guess I, my question is, I'm wondering, um, I guess, what is in that ca area, I guess, in the cavity, if, if it's possible to do any damage when somebody's What is in, in the there? cavity? No, no one's ever asked the question that way, I don't think. No. Well, because I'm, I'm thinking of in terms of, like, I mean, I know basic AMP, and I feel like it's kind of a stupid question, but I've never had anal sex before. Mm -hmm. And... Aside from the obvious fears, you know, of it hurting or whatever, I'm kind of concerned that something might get damaged in there. No, you know, there's like, no, there's no, it's not as though there's an organ waiting to be punctured, but you can rip the anus, you can tear the rectum, you can cause fissures and things that could permanently impair the function of that area. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't happen all the time, but it can happen. No. Okay. Doesn't I, happen. I just imagine one percent of the time. Get your guts poked out or something. Really? No, no. no you're, you're, uh, depending on who the guy is, but the spleen is a good uh, fourteen inches away from there. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. Uh, okay. Oh, good. Oh, good times. That's good. Yeah. And um, one other question, actually, since I have you guys on the phone, uh, one position that my boyfriend likes, and I guess it's because he, he can get in a little bit deeper when we're having sex. I'm on my back, and he likes my legs to be. I guess, I don't know how to describe it, I guess, up in the air, but with my the heel of my foot on his shoulders. Yeah, all right. Damn, his, bitch. Yeah, we got that. And he's on his knees. Right. Can he, sometimes it hurts, and I know the obvious answer is if it hurts and stops. So sometimes I do stop him, and sometimes it feels okay, but I'm wondering if he can damage anything in there. You know, why do you sound like you're talking about like uh, your your stereo equipment or something. You're, you're so it's your, it's your body we're talking about here. I know. I guess I just feel kind of funny, like saying I don't know, because I feel well, funny you, talking you, to strangers about it. Yeah, but what's the well, what's the fixation on damaging things in these in these areas? I mean, you, you've taken uh, anatomy classes, right? Yeah. All right, so you know what's going on. I don't know. I guess because I've never been with somebody that has like, of his size, and he it's you know I. I just wonder sometimes if... Oh, he's a big... Sometimes I feel like it's poking the pit of my stomach, like it's in there, like deep. Wow. How about, yeah, how about get him to, 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 come, to come back a little bit? Adam, the, the grommet, the lump grommet. All right, yeah. Uh, 
Drew, what's wrong with your connection? Why are you so much worse than the people who call this show? Are you on a cell phone, Drew? Yeah, I am. You're such a fool, Drew. Hey, hey, I was trying to hook up the computer with the other phone. All right, we're going to hang up, and we'll get you on a regular phone, please. All right. Oh, my God, Drew. Just call back the number. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Uh, wait, all right. All right. Uh, uh, what? You, you don't want to get on a landline? What? What is this? And and why didn't you guys ask him if he was on that? I know you did, but who would, you just wouldn't think anyone would be that stupid as to pick up a cell phone. This was just so last minute, the whole oh, thing. All right. Was the last minute. All right. For such an idiot. Greg. Yeah. You're 42. Right. We're going to talk a little carpentry while Drew's uh, dialing the show back up. It's about time. You're a carpenter yourself? I was a carp. I hung doors for a living. Ten years ago, and I know more about doors than the people that say they're carpenters that call you. Well, that's easy, because anyone who calls the show doesn't know anything about anything ever. I don't care what they profess to do. They never know it. So I'm ready. You can quiz me. I haven't reviewed doors or anything. I'm going off my memory. You want a quiz, huh? Sure. All right. I didn't study either. All right. Now I could ask you a question. Can it only be doors? That was my specialty, actually. All right. All right, let me ask that's you something. That's what so you always bring up is doors. Well, I brought it up last night, but uh, no, that's not all yeah. I always bring up. Well, I know a little bit about everything else. Mm. You are the patron saint of Let, let me ask carpenters. you. Thank you, Greg. What would be uh, a standard reveal for some uh, casing on a door jam? Oh, that's a that's a the casing question. Yeah, see that? I, I went I went a little outside the door, yeah, but go you ahead. Did. That's a trick question. I used to use the standard like three inch wide teardrop shape. You yeah, know? but that's the type of casing. I want to know the reveal, the setback. Oh, oh. okay. About an eighth inch. All right. The very most. All right. Now you, you ask me a question, I'll see if I Have can. Have you ask. ever heard of a buck gauge? Mm, no. See that's but there's different gauges. It's you know there's a re there's regional things here. Drew's back, by the way. I'm back. Ever heard of a butt gauge? Well, I know there's butts and miter. You know, I know right. what a butt well, joint no. is. They call hinges butts. Well, yeah, I know they call hinges butts. They got a strike side and a butt side. But then what's a butt gauge? The butt gauge you used you would use it. The you set it for the hinge on the jam. Whatever, whatever. Yeah, I know. It's oh, exciting oh, stuff. Oh, the template. No, no, and I used to chisel all my. Uh, all my uh, hinges in, too, and I got a real kick out of it when you said that people just screw their hinges right to the jam. That's always a beautiful sign of workmanship. All right. Well, what's a butt gauge? Very well, quickly. when you put the hinge up in the door jam, before you hang the door itself, the slab door, you would set that to the backstop, and it, on the backside of the gauge, it automatically set the hinge setting for the door so it didn't bind when it closed. Oh. This guy sounds like a real, an oh. actual craftsman, Adam. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, no, no. Adam knows what he's talking about. I can tell by the way he talks about doors. Thank you. I have a, I have a great love of doors. <laughs> no, we never used any uh, butt gauges. I could talk doors all day long with uh, Greg, but uh, butt gauge. But uh, I think I rented that. But uh, Dr. <laughs> Drew's back, and now Dr. Drew's on a landline. Right, Drew? Does that sound better? Sounds marginally better. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you didn't think about that before with your cell phone, huh? We had so many phones going simultaneously trying to get this prob these problems fixed, you can't even imagine. All right. I, I couldn't tell what the hell phone I was on. All right. All right, here we go. Yeah. The fact that it was the size of a thimble and had no cord on it wasn't a clue, huh? Uh, yeah. yeah. That once again. All right. All right, Drew. All right. Tommy Vu. Never seen it. Yeah. All right, buddy. Didn't know what phone he was on. All right. Well, you sound a lot better now. So All let's... Right, Let's move forward and see uh, who we get here. Let's talk to uh, Shannon, who's 17. Shannon? Yeah. What's up? Um, I have a question for you, Adam. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, um, I'm kind of debating on whether I should uh, mess with this 14-year-old since I'm 17. Yeah. Should I? I don't know. This sounds bogus to me. Yeah. I mean, what, what, I mean uh, no, no question. No. Okay. Yeah, don't. Leave her alone. Drew, where are you calling from? The Club La Vila here in uh, Panama City. Right. There's a radio station right in the middle of this club. You, you and I were here years ago, remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seems like a loud place to do a radio show from. Well, it's a sound booth. Uh-huh. Are you inside of that sound booth? Yeah, while well, you're hearing sound? Well, yeah, but maybe that's why they call the sound booth. There's that's a constant nice. sound of a loud crowd in the background drinking. Maybe I should go back on the cell phone. Well, it seems like you ought to just go back to your hotel and pick up the phone. You're probably right. Yeah. 
Nothing gets past you, Drew. How far? We're still trying to fix this uh, studio. Ah, it's never going to work. How? You on the phone line isn't too bad. If I think if you're just sitting in your room. How far is your room from uh, from where you are now? Ten fifteen minutes. Really? Yeah. Why don't we? Uh, you know, why don't you make a mad dash for your hotel room I, right I don't now? I have a car here. No, no. I mean run. Oh, okay. I mean oh. physically run. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Take you don't a more than ten minutes though. Okay. Well, I thought you said ten fifteen. Y- yeah, in a car. I I know, but where's your car, Drew? Hold on a second. Wait a minute, <laughs> Drew. Why is it you don't have a car? Because the woman that dropped me off said she'd come back at two. Uh huh. Well, you're gonna need to get a ride from one of those drunken club goers now. All right. All right. All right. How about if I just go across the street to a payphone? I got a better idea. Why don't you call a cab so you can uh, you can get a nice twelve dollar fare and ask ask for seven dollars back. Yeah, eight dollars yeah. back. Oh, eight. seven back. Yeah. No, seven. You give the guy a dollar. Yeah, yeah. Let's be fair. All right, Drew. What do you think about uh, wrangling a ride back to your hotel? That's what you think I should do. I think that's what you should do because there's there's too much uh, ambient noise there. Or maybe they have some sort of office or something upstairs. Yeah, that would work. No sound. All right. During the break, they can take me up there, all right? Okay. All right. Let's finish the segment. That sounds good, Drew. All right. All right. So uh, let's uh, keep moving on the phones here. We'll speak to Linda, who's 22. Linda? Yeah. You got uh, pierced nipple? Yes, I do. Mm Mm-hmm. It's been giving me some trouble for the last, oh, 18 months. Mm Mm-hmm. And I've been to see the doctor when it first started giving me trouble. Mm-hmm. What do you mean trouble? What's the problem? Excuse me, I can't hear Drew. <laughs> Drew can't hear Drew because there's a <laughs> there's a limbo contest going on in the background. Mm, sounds like fun. What the? <laughs> Hold on. You know what that is? They're saying there's a DJ booth in the middle of the dance floor. They're talking about uh, for uh, senior senior handy who's going to be mixing up the, the cool sounds. They're not talking about doing a radio broadcast, Super right? Handy. No, this is a radio studio. Radio? St- no. Yeah. How could it be? A, what, they're not doing news out of that station, are they? No. No, it's like it's 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 uh, party it's party people's uh, Saturday Night Live show where they <laughs> go out there and they're like, hey, who is it? Everyone is, hey, and then he plays some music, right? Uh, you got me. How come nobody sussed that out? I just, uh, that's what, listen, uh, nobody's more pissed off than I am. I don't know. I think Anderson's more pissed off than you are, but. No, Elvis might be. Elvis is. Linda? Yes. All right. So anyway, you went to the doctor. Been to the doctor repeatedly, been on several courses of antibiotics. Mm -hmm. And uh, get off the antibiotics a week to a month later, it shows signs of infection, draining, usually a pale green. (laughs) Ooh. Have they cultured it? Yes, she cultured it. She said it was a staph infection. She didn't tell me what kind of staph infection. Have you taken the piercing out? Yes, the piercing's been out for about two years. You know, for years? Two years. About two years. Two years. Uh, it, piercing is not without its complications. I, I mean, some people get abscesses that, from their tongue that can track into their brain. People get permanent scarring and have bleeding and infections. All right, so... It's a foreign body... <laughs> In your soft tissue, it, it can be a disaster. Do you have any kids? Why the antibiotics haven't worked? No, I don't have any. Children. Okay. Why haven't the antibiotics worked? Possibly though? because you may need some surgical debridement. You made it some infection. The, the, the antibi- antibiotics can't get to the site of infection. You have to actually surgically go in there and clean everything out. What's debridement? Cutting it out. All right. And that's going to be a mess. It's All right. We need to. Uh, we need to debride you from the center of that club and get right. you up up to the office where all the coke deals go down. All right. Good. All right, all right. So we're gonna do that, Drew. All right. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta find out how you got talked into doing the broadcast from the middle of this club in Panama City. Yeah. All right, we'll figure that out. Hey, Drew. Yeah. You gotta take a chill pill, buddy. Now, come on. It's all good, right? <laughs> yeah, good times. Yeah, good times. Drew's in uh, Panama Beach. What do they call it? Panama Beach City, Panama City Beach. Panama Beach City, Panama City, Florida. Panama City, Florida. All right. He's there because uh, someone dropped a nickel. And we'll be right back after this. Hey, everybody. I'm Adam Carolla. Phone number 1 800 LOVE 191. My uh, partner and 
On again, off again lover, Dr. Drew, is out in Panama City in Florida. What, what, what do you mean off again? What are you talking about? Well, Drew, after that debacle with the cell phone, I, I got to tell you, that does uh, not make me moist. Okay? Did, <laughs> I am not impressed. <laughs> not impressed. How is that? How's it sounding now? They sound much better. All right. All That's right. one of those lines uh, chicks use in movies, but I yeah. don't think they've ever used it off a movie set where, like, the girl looks at the guy when the date is going bad because he's uh, part teen wolf, and they look at him and they go, I am not impressed. You know what, though? They say that to one another. Oh, I see. That's the kind of S. That's girl talk. Not impressed, S? Yeah. He didn't impress me. Hey, have you... Uh, has that been an issue for you ever with a woman, whether she's impressed you or not, Drew? <laughs> no, but I'm sure uh, it's been an issue for them yeah. as far as I'm concerned. Well, anyway. You know, look, at you, you look at you. Yeah. What the hell does that mean? Here's the point. You're not moist. That's what that means. That's right. I'm not impressed. Therefore, I'm not moist. Drew is uh, in Panama City. Now, Drew, you're at a big club over there. Yeah. Is that the one with the big uh, pylons holding the place up? Yeah, it's like multi-level, the pool outside. Remember Aerosmith played at the pool side last time we were here? Yeah. Yep. That? Yep. That was... Yes, he did. Yep, that was back in 74. Uh, I think Crocus opened for them. Yeah. Yeah, it was a good time. Good time. <laughs> so is it crazy over there? When is when is spring break? Is it this weekend? This is it. This is peak spring break week, isn't it? Yeah, this is it. This is the week. All right, so uh, plenty of crazy teenagers running around with their tops up. Oh, my God. Yeah? Yeah. People getting loaded? Yeah. You're, you're, now, you're going to get out of that club. At, well, isn't it three hours there? Two hours. Oh, it's two hours. Yeah. In that part of Florida. Florida gets to three hours somewhere, doesn't it? About uh, ten miles east of here. Oh, really? Yeah. All right, so I was close. So you're going to be leaving there about 2 a.m., right? Yep. Yeah, so you're probably going to have to resuscitate uh, some teens that have uh, done some pass acts. My, pass my cards. I had to charter a jet and have them sent back to my drug unit. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah, you know what you got to do? Could a, I could run a detox unit in this office. I, really, I'd get some IV poles set up. We could be detoxing these kids all night. No, you know what you got to do? You got to have something that says, like, Dr. Drew's party bus on it. It says, like, <laughs> free GHB. And then every, every drunken teen that stumbles onto it, you just lock them in. And it's bound for uh, Pasadena. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. R right into oh, the drug oh unit. Oh, my God. I went on those transport planes that we were talking about last night. Just roll the buses right on into that plane and take off. That's right. Big C-130. Drop them over uh, Iraq. <laughs> Be the new 21,000-pound uh, bomb. That's right. All right. Do we really need to test that bomb, by the way? Yeah. Give me a worst-case scenario. We drop it on Iraq. It doesn't go off. Its weight is so great that it takes out 40 or 50 structures. <laughs> it never spark comes from it. Uh, really? can we just go back to the drawing board? Yeah. Uh, how, how often do we test uh, bombs that don't work, by the way? Good question. Uh, I mean, you never, you never by see... By the way, how much did it cost? To test it? Yeah. About the same. Well, it's like saying, how much does it cost when they crash one of those Land Rovers at 40 miles an hour in the consumer yeah. test? It's like, well, here's how much it costs. Go down to the Land Rover dealer. That's how much it costs. Costs as much as a new one, I'm guessing, right? Yeah. Here's the deal. How many loads do we have that we can start wasting them out over the Pacific somewhere? Well, it's ironic that um, it's, it's like, you know, it's funny. I never really thought about it, but it's like uh, there's Hiroshima and there's Nagasaki, and we're the only country to ever detonate nuclear devices on foreign soil. Meanwhile, we've blown up 700 on our land. There were and there were 70 times as power, 700 times as powerful as those ones. That's right. So what kind of genius is that? We've been bombing ourselves for the last 50 years. All right, all right. Is this those drugs talking again? All right, maybe it is. Last, do you remember last night's show, by the way? No, I, I don't have uh, much recollection I mean, of, you were, of the day. You were, you were, I mean... I, oh, I shut believe, up. I should have called the PD. You should Please. not have been driving like that. How dare you? You I'm, were so nice. I've driven in much worse condition you than that, Drew. You were so trip. pleasant. Well, I'd lost my will to fight. Oh, my God. You strap a man down in a seat for three hours and you know, yank his soul out through his gums. Yeah. He's, he's going to lose some fight. No. Near, very yeah, nearly. Yeah. Time oh, flies uh, when you're on Vicodin. Yeah, that was uh, Paul Rodriguez. 
All right, hey, uh, tomorrow night, uh, Joe Millionaire is going to be in here, uh, Evan Marriott. So uh, we'll talk to him about stuff he's probably been talked to about for about the last uh, three months. Yeah. But don't worry, I'm going to give it my unique spin. You know how I come up with that, Drew? Oh. No preparation. Yeah. That's my key to success. And I've, I've been studying that diligently. Thank you. Yeah. All right, so now you're in the office of this club, and we can go to the phones, yeah. right? All right, I'm going to just start going down the line here and see what we uh, end up with. Colin? Yes. You're 27? Yes. Where are you calling from, the same club? <laughs> He's in the DJ booth of the same club where you worked, right? He just, yeah, I just left him. <laughs> he got a cell phone and went back into the booth. All right, so, Colin, where are you, in your bathroom? No, I'm not. I'm actually in my room. Ah, hardwood floors? Carpet, actually. Wow. Got to put some padding under that carpet. Now, What's your question, buddy? Um, for some reason, um, each time or after I would have sex, uh, the day after my the shaft of my penis would actually chafe or the skin would split. Mm -hmm. I would have some sort of, uh, like, a, I don't know, just... I don't know, you just chased. It's like it would be yeah. chased. Like. All right. Maybe you have a yeast infection. Or even after I masturbate. Mm -hmm. If I would, I would refrain from a, from doing any of that for about a week and a half or two weeks, and nothing's ever happened. Uh -huh. Did every time you irritate the skin, it, it, it breaks open? Right. Did you ever have one time where it was really bad, like when, you, when it first developed? Was it a lot of sort of ulceration? Well, some sort of swelling on the skin. Because it really kind of sounds like herpes. Herpes, mm -hmm. some people... It doesn't they, sound like herpes. No, some people, when they get herpes, they, it's primarily ulcerating. And part of that syndrome can be whenever they irritate it, like even with soap and, and washcloth, it'll break out every time. But it doesn't sound like he's ulcerating. It just sounds like it's dried. The skin would, would split. That's kind yeah. of... Splitting yeah. open. That's a little ulcer forming. Yeah. All right. Is it... Is it does it have red bumps or ulcers on it? No, nothing. Well, but, but and a split is an ulcer. The skin is open. Yeah, a split is 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 an ulcer. But if but if something dries out, it can split. Not that's pretty much what it was happening. Actually, it would dry out and it would split. This is after having either sex or after masturbating a day after. Every time. Yeah. That sounds weird. It, it, you need to see a dermatologist. All right, good you times. Really yeah. Yeah, go see a dermatologist. I don't know what the hell that is. We never really had that. But then again, people don't do good jobs of describing things to us, do they, Drew? No, not dermatologic things. It's like it's like impossible. All right, let's uh, talk to uh, uh, Chester, Stevie. Ste oh, Stevie's a female. Yeah, let's talk to Stevie. Stevie, you're 17. Yeah. What's up? Uh-oh. Yeah. Um, when I was 15 years old... My uncle. Four. She was four. Something happened. Right. Oh. What? Yeah. What happened at fifteen? Um, when I was fifteen, is when my uncle tried to rape me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, now, him and my aunt are getting a divorce, but she's actually um thinking about taking him back. Sure. Who could leave and all that? What? Uh, well, what did he do? How did he try to rape you and not succeed? Okay, well, what happened was he had told me that he wanted to spend time with me alone, sure. like to bond or whatever, and mm -hmm. I thought it was okay because he was my uncle and he wouldn't do anything like that. But he told me not to tell my parents, so I was kind of like... Uh, oh, my God. Yeah, I was kind of stupid about it, but I was like in denial. Well, but you must have been victimized some time. Oh, Drew, quiet down. I want to hear this story oh, first, okay. and then we'll get to that stuff. Okay. And, All right. Um, I was in the kitchen, and I remember he grabbed my belt loops, and yanked me towards him, and then he just started, like, touching me all over my body and, like, trying to take off my clothes. Yeah, well, he, wait a minute. He said he wanted to spend some time with you. Yeah. Does that mean, like, sleep over at your aunt and uncle's house, or? Then, like, he just wanted to hang out with me, like, just to get to know each other better. Just at his house? Yeah. Okay. All and right. uh, my cell phone actually went off, and I was like, oh, I got to go. And then, like... It was weird, like, I don't know, then it just was over. Oh, uh, okay. Just like, yeah. And, like, just don't tell your parents about what happened because they wouldn't understand. Yeah. All right, but I don't know. I mean, I understand that's uh, lecherous behavior, and your 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 aunt should probably not get back with them, but I don't know if that goes down as a, an attempted rape. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, but now let's get back to Drew's first question, right. which is uh, what happened when you were young? When I was, um, like, actually his stepson, like, molested me for a long time until, like, from when I was, like, four. Ooh, like, Adam. Drew, was... Drew said four. Thank you very much. And, Drew, by the way, I was I was always with you on the... Uh, the, something happened earlier. I just wanted to hear what the story was we were talking about before I we got it. back to it. But, uh, yep, Drew screamed. Uh, she sounded four years old at the uh, beginning of the call. So, uh, actually, it was even be uh, better or worse or whatever. Uh, Stevie said something. I was Something happened, and Drew said, when you were four. And something did happen when you were four. Yep. And that was that was your step, you say your stepbrother? Or she was four, something happened. Drew. That was, um, that was actually my uncle's stepson. Your uncle's stepson. Same uncle? Yeah. Oh, ha, ha, ha. Oh, what a delight. Who yeah. got to him, though? The dad got to him, probably. Oh, who knows? So he, he, he molested you when you were four for how long? So I was like 11. Oh, boy. Oh, my goodness. And, and, and did you see them a lot? Did you spend a lot of time over there? Yeah. Um, my aunt, his mom would babysit me. Mm-hmm. Oh, and so he would come along. All right, let's, yeah. let's try to get to some solutions here. Okay. Is he an older kid? My cousin's, like, 26 right now. Mm. Your, uh, your step-cousin? Yeah. Like, nine years older. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that's pretty substantial. Yeah. All right, so where's he, by the way? Dead in jail, working construction, a publicist? Which is it? <laughs> He's in jail right now. He's in jail? Yeah. Fantastic. All right, so, Stevie, your your family is a mess. Mm hmm All right? That's fine. You, uh, as far as your uncle getting back together with your aunt, uh, don't worry about don't that. Don't get involved with that. Yeah. She okay. screwed up. She chose a path in life. She made her bed. Now she's got to get molested in it. That's her I business. Don't I get involved. Tell her. Well... I think I, I think it's perfectly fine for you to tell her, you know, by the way, you should know this about this guy. I don't think you have to say it was an attempted rape. I think you can just basically say what happened and let her draw her own conclusions. Would you agree with that, Drew? Yeah. And she can certainly factor that into her, you know, list of, of, of reasons why she should or shouldn't get back with the guy. Yeah, Hopefully she shouldn't. Our, our caller needs to get some treatment or something. Yes. So, Stevie, what about a little therapy for you? Um, I was in therapy for, like, a long time, but I was kind of scared that if I told her, mm -hmm. she would tell my parents. And you, You've got to yeah. talk about it. This is a major, major issue for you. You've got to be able to do it. And and what about your relationships now? Do you have a boyfriend? No. Okay. Why? You scared of guys? Um, yeah, I'm scared that they'll just hurt me. Good. I mean, I don't mean good, but I mean good. better better than just being pregnant and being passed around from guy to guy. Yes, exactly. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's a good instinct. All right, so you're 17, you're smart, you're senior in high school. Yeah, I'm a junior. Oh, junior in high school. Yeah. All right, maybe not that smart. Do you live with your parents? But the point is, what, do you live at home? Yeah. Okay. And how are your parents? Um, they're, they're all right. I mean, they're pretty strict, but other than that, they're, they're good parents. Okay, are you going to go off to college somewhere? Hopefully, I don't know yet. Why don't you try to get your grades going, watch out for the guys, don't get pregnant, and get some therapy. I mean, you have to. You got molested from 4 to 11. Those are the, those are the prime years, right, Drew? Oh, that just has such a profound effect on her development. Yeah. I mean, she really, thank God she has good parents. That's probably why she's kind of keeping it together such as it is. Yeah. All right. All right. Good times. Yeah, good times. Let's lighten the mood with another carpentry challenge. Butch? All right. Yeah. You're 52. That's right. You're a carpenter. You have a, a, a challenge question for me. Okay. All right. Uh, when you uh, install your doors, do you, do you bevel both sides or you just bevel the, inside, the uh, strike side? I bevel the strike and the butt side, uh, Butch. I find uh, it, it uh, prevents uh, binding. You know I like I mean? that way, too, myself. I'll just put a couple degrees on uh, the strike and the butt side. All right. Got to admit, got to admit, Butch didn't always do it that way. Yeah. Yeah. I know a lot of people don't. No, they uh, they cut corners. What yeah. kind of planer you like? Um, geez, I haven't even hung a door for a while. I use an electric planer. Electric. You're a Porter Cable man? Uh, yes, I love Porter Cable. Yeah, that's a nice item. 
What is that? Yeah, the Porter Cable was the planer uh, that the uh, hobo ripped off from my grandmother's shed oh, that she never, never gave me back. That was your prize instrument. Yeah, if anybody wants just a little insight to uh, my family... I was uh, living in some uh, crappy apartment in North Hollywood, probably my, eh, that's 23, 24 years old, living in this crappy apartment. Had a bunch of tools because I was working as a carpenter, but couldn't keep them, I would have to keep them inside of my apartment or truck them out of my truck. I couldn't leave them in my truck. I couldn't leave them anywhere because they get stolen. So I uh, put them over my grandparents uh, in essentially their shed, which is sort of inside their house. And uh, my prized possession was my Porter Cable door plane, 220 bucks, and that was uh, back in the day. Uh, One day I went over there to grab it to do a job, open the case, which is still brand new, and there was nothing inside of it. And I said, what, what happened? Someone stole this out of the case. So I said to my grandmother, who, uh, what happened? Was, who, was somebody here? Was, somebody stole my, uh, my, my door plane. And she said, uh, well, I hired this bum who was just walking around to rake up some leaves a couple days ago he must have stolen it and i said yeah yeah he did and she said yeah well what are you gonna do oh and uh that was the last porter cable door plane i had oh my god oh yeah yeah not gonna pay for half no, no. what are you gonna do eh, what a delightful I mean, was there, any, I there, there must have been some oh my god i'm so sorry anything what do you mean? I, it was it was my fault for leaving it at her house. Uh, uh Drew, you know, if I didn't want it ripped off, I could have brought it up into my apartment. Uh, there yeah. you go. Uh, there you go. Good times. <laughs> yeah, good times. <laughs> Great people. All right, what are we going to do, Drew? I think we're going to take a break. Fair enough. You doing all right over there? I'm great. How am, how am I sounding? Yeah, what, what's that office like you're in? I, I actually wanted to describe it to you. Tony Montero's office. There is a uh, Sambuca peppermint schnapps and a James Harbor rum. Wait, Beams Eight Star Kentucky Whiskey Blend. Mm -hmm. One, two, three ashtrays filled to the brim with old butts. Really? And just. I mean, oh, true. I mean, true with the S word, everybody. <laughs> I just. <laughs> I hope we're not delay even still we're doing it this way. It's okay to use the S word if you're describing a Florida decor. They're just stu <laughs> there's stuff strewn all over the desk. There's a Miller, Miller Genuine Draft plastic uh, rendition of a bottle. Nice, nice. Yeah, it's a good time. All right, buddy. Black carpet, because that's a touch of class there. No, it's the kind of a gray weave. Okay. Well, hang tight there, buddy. All right. Have one of those dram buoys, and uh, we'll take a break, and we'll come right back. All right. Hey, everybody. It's Love Line. I'm Adam. Dr. Drew is... I uh, love that. Uh, yep. It's good riff there by the uh, All-American Rejects. Dr. Drew is in uh, Panama City doing a little work, uh, spring break time, with uh, Trojan, Trojan uh, condoms. And uh, he uh, was set up at a studio there that was in the middle of the dance floor of a club. Sounded uh, ill-conceived from the start to me, but uh, as it turns out, everything worked out. No, as it turns out, it uh, didn't work out so well. So uh, they moved him around a couple times. He got on a cell phone, then he got on a landline. And uh, now I hear he has a microphone, but uh, actually I don't hear it from him. I just hear it from uh, our people. But uh, they're uh, working it out over here, the crack engineer team over at Westwood One, and we're going to have him up in just a second. So let's see. Let me go to the phones. In the meantime, and speak to Mike, who's 24. Mike? Yeah, hey, Adam. What's up? Hey, um, I should have a question about marriage. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm wondering, do you have any idea what the right the right age is for that? I mean, if you could do it over again, would you wait till you're, you know, maybe 30 or... So I'd be in my 60s. Really? Uh, no, no, I, I think there's a, I think there's sort of a minimum and uh, kind of a maximum that I wouldn't go past either way, but in between that, it's kind of up to you, depending on where your career is, where you live, what you want out of life, you know, all that stuff. I mean, I wouldn't get married before 25 as a guy. But I wouldn't get married over 40 either if you wanted to have some kids and do that kind of thing, you know? Yeah. And, uh, but there's a few, there's a few variables. Like, you know, have you, uh, 
finished college or do you were you going to college how's the career going do you want kids i'll ask yeah. you all these questions mike well, i just graduated from college about a year ago uh-huh and what do you want to do career-wise um i'm in sales actually and is that where you want to be i don't know it's kind of tough to tell so you're a little bit undecided yeah but you know the thing is as i talk to so many guys that are you know in their 60s 70s even 80s and they say that you know, if they could do it over again, they would wait till they're 30, even sometimes 40 yeah. to get married. <clears throat> 30 is the perfect age to get married. 30 yeah. to 33. Everybody would wait. I uh, I told them a minimum. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, Drew. Okay, good. How's the sound? It sounds uh, much better. Thank you. Uh, 30 to 33, I think, is the age. I, it, late. You know, the thing, nice thing about late 20s, though, is uh, I'll tell you something. Now that my kids are 10, I'm getting tired. You know what I mean? As as you hit your yeah, well, they're 40s. pain in the ass, those kids. I've no, no, them. but I mean, you hit, as you hit your mid forties, it, it's you you don't have the kind of stamina you had. I wish I wish I were like eight years or six years younger, yeah. just to be able to keep up with my kids. Drew, let me explain. Yeah, let me explain something about Drew's uh, waning stamina. When we were in North Carolina all last week, every day we we every night we'd work until three a.m., come home, go to bed at uh, four have the car pick us up at 9 o'clock, go on the set, come back at about 8 o'clock at night, and Drew wanted to hit the gym before uh, before dinner. I was yeah. like, Drew, aren't you running on fumes? Aren't you exhausted? He's like, well, then I'm going for a run. And I'm like, uh, all right, well, I'm going to go drink in my room and uh, hopefully pass out. You wake me for dinner. So, Drew, I think your stamina is fine. It's, well, it's uh, not as good as it used at. to be, though. I mean, I, and let me tell you something. I'm keeping up with kids. Yeah, the ferret year. doesn't have the kind of uh, stamina that you used to have, Drew. But uh, you do pretty good, you know. You move around pretty good, buddy. All right, so, Mike. Yeah. Uh, the point is, is uh, if you have to ask, if you have to call the radio show and ask them if you're ready to get married, you're probably not ready to get married. I agree with that. All right. And he just graduated from college, hasn't really got his career on track yet. And as a that, guy, you want to get yeah. your career on track. Th that is that is the thing about guys. Uh, when women think that they can somehow convince a guy to get married, or and for women, it's more a choice about who the person is. For men, it's about are they ready? Right. Are they at a time in their life when they've done what they need to do, and now they're ready? Right. And some, a lot of guys regret having let some of these women go by. You know, they, They've left some behind that they wish they were with. Yeah. I wish some of my exes would have uh, went by, then I could have uh, watched them get it on with these chicks. Oh, for God's sake. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, that's it. Chester? Oh, yeah. You're 15? Yeah. Your dad's an alcoholic? Affleck. Oh, that's he, nice. He did the Good Affleck time. duck thing and then hung up. <laughs> you know, it's so funny. I, I didn't like Chester's question, but I saw he was on hold for 30 minutes, and the closest person to him was like 11 minutes, and I thought, eh, let's give Chester a break. Trust now, your instincts. Now I curse, Chester. All right, let's talk to uh, Nina, who's uh, 20. Nina? Yeah, hello. you got a 40-year-old co-worker? Yep. And, uh, oh, you want to have a lesbian relationship with her? No, 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 no. Oh, she wants to have a lesbian relationship with you? Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh. Is she your boss? Um, no, she's not a boss. Is she the uh, same level as you are or under you? or? Um, she's higher than me. Yeah. But she's not over you specifically. No. <laughs> okay. So to speak. Yeah, yeah right. Uh, okay. And are you attracted to her? No. And you're not a lesbian yourself? No. No. Oh. Well, this seems kind of far-fetched then, doesn't it? Well, well no. What's, I what's mean, the question? I yeah, what is the question? Well, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a woman, and just like really? other woman, I have, you know, Needs. I have fantasies about other women. Right. Uh -huh. But um, not like this. I've had a threesome. Oh boy! But not with, you know, someone who's older than me. And if it if it was someone who, if it was a coworker who was younger and more attracted to me and was cute, then maybe I would have considered it. But she's older. She has a son. I see. And I, she's uh, lesbian, and she calls me her lesbian recruit. And right, hold on a uh -oh. second. Uh, uh -oh. that's, that's nice. True. You ever been anyone's lesbian recruit? I, 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 when I was younger, I tried. I enlisted in the uh, lesbian army out of high school, but I never was recruited. I just I went straight as, in. I, I visited their boot camp. Oh, really? Interesting. Yeah, I did. I, I don't did. think it's Very boot camp. I think it's sandal camp. But Yeah, yeah. All right. So Nina's basically calling to tell us that there's a 40-year-old chick that's not very attractive who likes her in her office, and that if she was younger and more attractive, Nina could see herself having a fling with her, but she's old and unattractive, so Nina's not going to have a fling with her. 
That's so a, why she, yeah, why I don't know calling. why she's calling us. Yeah. I don't know how I, I haven't been very, I haven't den, denied her. I've been, you know, I don't know what to say. I you, you've just been kind of giggling and, and exactly. changing the subject. Exactly. And is she getting more aggressive? Well, she keeps saying, oh, I know I'm flirting with you. I'm crossing the line, but, oh, I don't want to scare you. And I said, oh, no, you're not scaring me. And she says, oh, well, you know, um, I, I'm being a little flirtatious, you know. I'm like, oh, that's okay. She's like, it's flattering, right? And I said, yeah, it's flattering. It it really so, is because I'm not attracted to her. Why are you calling? Because I want to know what I should say to her. Well, so yeah. you're you're saying that the uh, lesbian horse is out of the lesbian barn a little bit, and you're having trouble pushing it back in. <laughs> Uh, uh, uh. I, you know, you know what you need to do. I I think you should start with just the basic blow off, which is you know she starts chatting you up and you say, uh, listen, Broomhilda, I'm really busy right now. Can we get back to this? Whatever the les- a popular lesbian name is for the for the older lesbian, I think it's still Broomhilda. But the the point the point is is. Whenever anyone is doing anything that you don't really like, uh, see if you can avoid the full-blown confrontation and start just to sort of blow them off. You know, yeah, don't call them back. And they say stuff like, we're getting together for margaritas on Friday, and you go, yeah, i got to do something else. You just kind of keep moving. Yeah, Isn't it interesting, Adam, though, how some people can't sort of set boundaries with people? It's like people that can't say no. People sort of come under the spell of other people, and they just kind of keep moving. You know, Wherever right. that person needs them to go, they kind of go along with it. Well, right. What is that? Uh, it's low self-esteem. I think it is. Yeah, bad parenting. All right, Drew, hang on over there. Why? Because we got to take a break. All right, is it sounding okay? Sound. You sound like a million bucks. Oh, God bless you. All right. I mean pesos. We'll be I'm back. So- oh. Everybody, it's Loveline. I'm Adam. Dr. Drew is over there in Panama City, Florida tonight. Yes, sir. Now, Panama City, is that, uh, is that an island? It's not it's an like island. It's like an isthmus, sort of, isn't it? Yeah, it just sort Peninsula. of sticks out into the water there. Exactly. And uh, now, what do you got cooking tomorrow there, Drew? I'm doing a big event at this same club for the Trojan Company. Uh, basically, well, the things I do at college is just answer questions, that sort of thing. Now, you perform uh, fellatio on a cucumber that's been covered with a Trojan condom. That's what I hear. Well, yeah. That's well, the, that's it's not, big, it's not just fellatio this year. Well, <laughs> I see. I can't. I see. I, you know, you have to come see the event to really get the full effect. Yes, that's a, a, Siegfried and Roy do not describe how they do their tricks on the that's radio. Right. I understand. Right. You must come see the show. That's right. All right, so people are going to come there, and uh, what time does the presentation start? I think it's, believe it's a two o'clock. They're, they're, I, thank you for promoting this, but they're not going to hear this till tomorrow night after the event. All right, but I'm curious anyway. I don't want to I, I believe it's two o'clock. Two o'clock in the afternoon? Yeah, it's an afternoon. They have things going all the time here. Mm, man, and you it, see, it seems it seems crazier than we were we were here in '96. Mm-hmm. It really does. You want to hear uh, how my career's going, uh, Drew? Tell me. Yeah, got a call from uh, my buddy uh, Joy over at uh, Wicked Pictures. Oh. You remember Joy? <laughs> sort of attractive blonde. <laughs> I do remember her. Yeah. Wears glasses. Looks like a uh, porn secretary. Right, right. And uh, you know, she's like like in the movies. You know, that's always funny when you watch a porn movie every once in a while and the guy walks into some bad office and the secretary's sitting behind the counter and you're like, is he going to nail her? And then <laughs> and then the other chick comes into the room and he's like, oh, no, he's going to get her. And then it's like, wait a minute, I bet he gets both of them. Because yeah, now you can't do a porn movie where there's a chick in it who doesn't get nailed. But it would be an interesting concept. But anyway... So she, let me, she doesn't let me do guess. porn. She doesn't do guess. porn. But yeah, her, but, but they, her but name. They're having a convention. They're having a convention. Let's no. this. And they. Oh, all right. All right. There you go. True. Wrong all as right. usual. All right. But she doesn't do porn. She does work for a porn company. She is attractive, and her name is Joy King, which uh, can be a normal name, but also sounds a little bit like the name of a vibrator. But the point is, is she calls me today, and she goes, uh, "Listen, uh, we're doing a uh, series. We thought of you." It's always bad. It's sort of like when they say, uh, you look just like this, my friend, and then you see the friend, and the guy's a slob. Or they say, uh, (laughs) I want to set you up with my friend, and then you see the chick, and she's a pig, and you're like, well, Mm -hmm. wait a minute. How do you you view me? But she says, uh, we got a project we're talking about, and uh, you're the uh, first person we thought of for it. 
It's a uh, series of uh, it's it's an infomercial. It's called uh, Porn Bloopers. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Now it's basically uh, girls gone wild, but uh, porn bloopers. We're going to be selling it uh, late night, and I'm like, you want me to host the commercial for porn bloopers? I'm just like, uh, yeah, yeah. What do you say? And I'm like, well, you know, I uh, I rarely say no to anything, but uh, as a matter of fact, when I told this to Jimmy, he said, hey, it's the first time he ever said no to anything. <laughs> Other than, uh, other than uh, one, uh, other than to something that you know was a liver-based product, I'm not a big yeah, fan yeah. of that. But uh, yeah. professionally, first time I ever said no. But uh, told her I got a deal pending with ABC, and you know them being a Disney company and everything, I probably wouldn't be crazy about me hosting the porn bloopers uh, late night infomercial. But you got to sandwich in between uh, Tommy Fu and the guy with the question marks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, on a suit. Well, that's you know that's what you aspire to. You, 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 those them's your peeps. I do love a porn blooper. I gotta say, and I did rent porn bloopers once in a uh, fit of desperation and turned out to be a little disappointing. But uh, no, that's all I need is uh, uh, two hours of uh, Ron Jeremy breaking wind uh, <laughs> seconds before the money shot. Okay, <laughs> so we're gonna hop back to the phones here, Drew, and I'll all tell you what good. I'm gonna do. No. I'm, I'm going to do what never works on the show. I'm just going to go who, who's ever been on the hold the longest. Oh, why? Because you yeah. can't take the time to read the damn the screen? Exact mundo. Oh. Chris? Yeah, what's up? You're 16? Yeah. What's up? Well, uh, I just kind of had this, like, I've been kind of depressed lately, and, like, I don't know if, like, the weather or something, and, like, and, like, it's, like, affecting the way I think, and, like, getting, like, you know, like, going into porn and stuff and it's like no good yeah how do you how do you normally think uh well i mean it's like i'm With just thinking like cunning like, and clarity or <laughs> <laughs> no kind of in clarity i mean <clears throat> I, I, yeah kind of blurred up kind of not thinking you're, straight you're depressed you smoke a lot of weed no not at all no drugs no drugs no drugs no drugs no drugs yeah so and, no and describe drugs. this depression to me what, what what set it off or anything happened to you uh nothing's happened uh I don't know what's, what's happened. Uh, I just all of a sudden, like, I, I think it's like the weather change. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm used to like, like really like sunny areas, and now it's like really like. Oh, what about what about one of those grow lights for your face? I mean, Ever, <laughs> well, you know, Everclear was in here a couple of days ago, and uh, yeah. Art was talking about having one of those lights for seasonal yeah. depression. It, it's not it's not an Everglow light, but there there are lights that sort of specified intensity that you use for a certain period of time, a couple times a day, and it helps with seasonal affective disorder. But I, you know, the the suddenness with which you describe this thing makes me worry that there's something medically going on. You, you, you've been feeling okay physically. Uh, yeah, but I mean, it's like it's like affecting the way I sleep and stuff too. Yeah, how much porn are you watching? Uh, well, not like it's like the internet. Yeah, so you're spending too much time doing that. Yeah, I think so. And uh, like, I, I I have it like I'm really like picky now. Like I have it down to like I'm really picky. And it's like it, I mean it's probably even pickier than you would be, Adam. Uh, picky with your porn? Yeah. Right. Adam's not very picky. No. I, well, I have certain criteria. Uh, nude and... Yeah. Let's see. Nude was the second one. Is that... Bouncy, bouncy. I mentioned that one already? Yeah. yeah. All right, Chris. Yeah. Uh, how about you start doing some push-ups every time you want to uh, go on the Internet and look at porn or do something no, like that? No, Adam. Why? No, you... Sure, what's, wrong, what, what, what's wrong with just some good old-fashioned discipline? That's what how these kids are missing. How about every time you want to masturbate, you do some push-ups? Think that's going to change anything? I wouldn't be able to make it through the door, Drew. That's right. My upper body would be so, so large. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be able to drive my car. <laughs> oh, my. I'd have to have, I'd have, to have my shirts modified. It would be disgusting, Drew. I'd be grotesque. <laughs> I'd look like that character from uh, Batman, the one, uh, but, I think it was Batman 2. Yeah, the I, movie. I, why do we both get the strong vibe that there's substances here? I just seem like he's smoking a lot of weed, that's yeah. all. Yeah, yeah. By the way, I, I don't see how you can avoid uh, porn on the Internet because uh, I got on the Internet tonight. I don't, uh, I don't do a whole lot of computerizing myself. I believe it's uh, the devil's tool. But I got on there because uh, I'm doing this uh, Toyota Grand Prix of uh, Long Beach, a celebrity race this year finally. And I was trying to figure out who else is doing it. And I did see a list at one point and realized why they asked me this year. But uh, I got on the Internet and I was like, well, let's see. I'll just go to Yahoo, and I punched in, like, celebrity 
Grand Prix Toyota no. and uh, porn sites. Nothing but <laughs> porn came up, and I'm like, I didn't say I didn't say fist f or anything. I, 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 I swear to Christ, I wrote. Here's what I wrote. I wrote celebrity Long Beach and uh, Grand Prix. Or wow. celebrity Long Beach and Toyota, and it was like so the celebrity pow, thing porn. Just, yeah, celebrity just must pull up the porn stuff. Right, and then here's what happens. So now it's nothing but porn, and it's like uh, fresh eighteen year olds nude getting wild. So I'm like, well, as long as I'm here, might as well punch this up. So I punch that up, and it's like, all right, well, now I'm gonna get back to finding who's in this Grand Prix, and I hit the little arrow that kicks me back. And it Uh kicks me into another porn site. And then it's just an infinite. Now I'm in porn world. I've been sucked into a porn vortex. I go forward. I go backward. It's nothing but porn, and I can't get it off the computer. Yeah. So I beat off six six times. I beat off, Drew. Uh, But I didn't want to. I didn't want to. That's my. That's my. Anyway, he he sounds. He sounds like he's. He sounds depressed. He sounds like he's getting into sexual compulsions. He sounds like he's been doing some substances. All right. Well, what about one of those grow lights? Uh, I don't think that will do it for old. Our caller. What's his name? His uh, name was Chris. Chris. All right. Chris. Well, then what? Chris see, needs a, see a physician? For, yeah, he really needs an evaluation. It also, that suddenness, it sounds, sometimes medical problems, even like thyroid conditions, that kind of thing, can bring on depression. He certainly deserves a workup to make sure it's not something else. All right. Let's talk to uh, David, who's uh, 31. David? Hey, how's it going, Adam? Good. Good. What's going hey. on? My question has to do with, I'm feeling a relationship budding between myself and a developmentally disabled female. Ooh. I've known on and off for about a year and a half now. Easy pickings. Well, how, how old is she? She's 26. 26. How she's do you know her? Been, uh, she, she's down the hall. Her parents live down there. And then every once in a great while, they send her up to live with her grandma. She comes down. We watch uh, NASCAR together. She's really into that. She's about at the uh, junior high freshman level. Yeah. Uh, as far as, like, her impulse control is kind of what makes it stand out she really doesn't have any it's not to the disfigurement um how old is she she's 26 or 26 26 and she lives down the hall in your building yes and you want to have a relationship with her or you want to yeah i'm i'm thinking about developing it she's flirting she's very flirty yeah uh, but she's shy because her father she's flirty because you got a shiny ring on and she's attracted to that like a trout her father threatens her, uh, I guess she had a bad incident with a guy, and her father uh, always tells her, I have control and I can put anybody that you, that hurts you or I think is hurting you in big trouble. All right. Well, let's, let's, uh, let's put her on the back burner for just one second and talk about you, David. Okay. You're not developmentally challenged, right? No. Yet you watch NASCAR all day <laughs> long. Uh, oh, come on. Do you have any excuse for that? It's interesting. She likes it. We, we I know she it. likes it. I understand where she would like it. I'm I'm understand where a 31 year old uh, adult. You're probably the only guy in Santa Cruz who watches NASCAR, by the way. <laughs> so now, how's your life going? I'm doing good. What are you doing? I'm a clerk. You're a clerk at what kind of place? A gas station. Gas station. So uh, okay. everything's going according to plan. That's Swimmingly. Right. Swimmingly, yeah. as they say. And uh, you're a simple man, yes. Uh, yeah. You uh, have simple needs and simple tastes, yes? Correct. You, but uh, you live alone? Yes. And uh, you make enough money to pay the bills? Right. And you start to have genuine feelings for this girl? Yes. And uh, you've not had a girlfriend in a while? Correct. All Ever? Right. Ever? Uh, yes, I've had a girlfriend. Yes, but it's been quite some time. Older women. Older women. Okay. Oh. Married? I don't really get along with my age group very well. I okay. see. Um, I really like, I took off and hitched like when I should have been doing the whole college age thing. Right, right. Huh. Okay. Well, now you're I, don't like, I don't like complex people, and she's a very simple-minded, direct person. Right. All right. All right. All right. Well, listen, I'm, uh, and you're not a creepy guy. No. And, uh, you don't plan on, uh, breaking this girl's heart. No, I don't want to do that. And I want to, I want to make it, how, how should I approach her parents if I should? Well, I, I think that's a great idea. I think talk to the dad. Just say, look, we've been spending time together. How's the dad things. doing? First, he's a bitter guy. Yeah. yeah. Pretty bitter. He uses her as a sounding board. Hey, he just for, yells. With his problems with the neighbors. Uh-huh. Uh-oh. Is she developmentally disabled or is she psychiatrically ill from the abuse that, of dad? I've often wondered if that complicates things. But, she no, she is learning disabled. 
uh, di- uh, diagnosed Down syndrome. I okay. see. Mild, Down syndrome. Mild, uh, mild Down syndrome. Mild. RH, RH blood factor or whatever that is. Okay. And she's 26 years old. You, you get the feeling she likes you? Oh, yeah. She's uh, she's very comfortable around me. Okay. Uh, not um, She's outgoing to everybody. Right. And But I noticed that when she's around me, her impulse control mm-hmm. uh, is really tame and uh-huh. uh, isn't, isn't a, as rapid as right. it usually is when she's what? around people. I want to go to Hawaii! Better, Yay! 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 I want to go to Hawaii! That's from the Man Cow Show. Oh. Well, I <laughs> guess they are running that on the Man Cow Show. Hey, but listen, uh, David. Yes. I got a little plan for you since you're both uh, sort of adults. Next time you're watching the NASCAR and one of those caution flags comes out, there's a little little downtime in the action, how about you uh, put your arm around her and give her a little kiss? All right. Yeah? I think I'll roll with that. Yeah, I think I've, you should I think I, you should roll with that. I think that's good, but I do think getting Dad on your side is a great idea. Yeah. Great idea. It it's, couldn't, it's so couldn't hurt. I mean, he works at the filling station. He could certainly, you know, this guy pulls up his uh, 72 Ford F-150, and this guy tops it off, you know, brings out a uh, big grab of Doritos, tells him it's on the house. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that, huh? <coughs> Nothing wrong with greasing the wheels just a little bit, eh, Drew? Hell yeah. That sounds well, like a, gotta... ma- a match made in heaven. It kind of does. It's interesting, isn't it? I mean, if you had to pick somebody for someone that uh, could be easily victimized and yeah. exploited. He seems yeah. like a good guy. Yeah. And and being sort of developmentally in junior high as a female, it eh, doesn't seem like it's going to have too great oh. an effect oh, in your no. life, send, is it? Send those cards and letters, man. There well, no, I'm just saying, uh, you can have conversations. You can watch NASCAR. Uh, you can have conversations about NASCAR, right? Well, he, uh, huh? Huh? Well, I mean, is it is it? Were you retarded when you were fourteen, Drew? Yes. Okay. Well, touche. I was retarded. Till I was twenty nine. Really? I didn't. Yeah, I, socially. I, hold on. I knew you. I didn't know you when you were twenty nine. Yeah. There was still some retardation when I met you. Oh, that's my point. Okay. Let's yeah. uh, let's talk to uh, Reagan. Is that a guy? Reagan. Hello. Hey, what's up, Tuts? You're 20. I am. What's going on? Um, my question is, I have an ex-boyfriend of three years, and we broke up seven months ago, but about two months, I mean, we've kept in contact, but about two months ago, we started having sex again mm-hmm. and hanging out, and I'm wondering, is, can I win him back that way? Through having sex? Yeah. Probably no. Not. What you, what you get no. What you get is Herpes. him being willing to continue having sex with you, and that will keep going. That will go on endlessly. Yeah. But there will no relate. If he has said to you, you know, if you sort of made it clear that the relationship is over, it is over. Yeah. Well, once yeah, one, once in a while, some guys sort of um, I don't know on the cusp or something, and uh, you know you you maintain a relationship and he ends up drifting back, but. I agree with Drew. Not not usually with twenty year old guys. No, he's having. I remember a guy will have sex with you know, any anybody. Not whole. That's yeah. right. Okay, but when when we while we were together, I had some some serious issues, yeah. and that and that's why we broke up. What issues? Well, I just severe depression, and I ended up actually going into the hospital when he broke up with me. I tried to kill myself. Uh huh. And I just, oh boy. I know, I All know, right. and I was well, I'm, most, I'm mostly concerned that if this guy is not planning to get back with you, what kind of guy, knowing that this upsets you that much to be involved with him, would then come on and exploit you, knowing that it's so disturbing, you're so involved, you're so connected to him, that if there was another rupture, you might become suicidal again. No, I mean, what kind of guy is that? No, but see, I wouldn't. I mean, it was like when, after going into the hospital and dealing with those issues with therapists and medication and whatnot, I, I really learned yeah, a lot. Yeah, but I, I right, understand but why, that. I just, all right, true, I understand down. that, but, but, but why not just start dick? for, yes, this guy's a yeah. dick. Yes, thanks. This you. guy's a dick. I mean, you were together, you were depressed, you broke up, you became suicidal, you went to the hospital, and now he's just going to see if he can cut himself off a slice once Thank a week. Thank you. Yes, right. 
this guy's a dick. So okay. you think I should just yeah, back just break out. up with yes. him? What's he yes. do? Why, why would you accept an asshole? What's like this that? guy's why? name? Craig? No, Ryan. Ryan, the number two dick name, <laughs> <laughs> only second to Craig. And what's he do? He he goes to school. Yeah, I knew it. A schoolboy. He's a full-time student. Full-time schoolboy. <laughs> I don't like this kid. I don't like him one bit. This thing stinks. It stinks to high heaven, I tell ya. Okay, I, ju well, I just broke into 50s guy, Drew. Yeah, yeah, Pops. All right, Reagan, break up with him, or you're already broken up with him. Stop having sex with him. Stop he's, he's, he's a despicable asshole. And just find, it, find a decent yeah. guy who's going to treat you right, all right? Thank you. Oh, no, every, you're better than that, baby. I know, but I can't find anyone. Well, all right. Uh, well, then, so, so be it. Then give yourself six months to get on your feet emotionally. Yeah, take some, take some yeah, time off. Take some time, but... I'm sure there are a lot of guys out there. It's just you need that exciting guy, and that's the one that's trouble for you. Right. And, and listen, everybody, don't don't be looking around to see who's going to make you feel what way your whole life. You know, lock yourself in your room and wait to die like I do. Think I care about that stuff, Drew? I don't think you care about much, Adam. You care about your teeth. Your teeth. Oh, no, no, I, I beg your pardon. Not your teeth. The dentist. Oh, my God. But you know what? What? You know what? When I was in that chair and he was squirting my teeth, he was doing it with warm water. Not all that. You, you. Uh, I know you were loaded last night when you came in, but you were speaking in glowing terms about the master, the 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 masterful skill with which the dentist approached you. Well, and listen. The medicines and how how delighted you were with the the amount of medicines you received. Well, he did what any what any decent human being would do with the resources that are available these days. Is he drugged me up? Oh man, did he? I mean, this guy. I swear to God, Drew, he gave me three or four pills. That was just to get started. That was so you wouldn't feel the shot. I, they gave me three or four pills. Then he gave me another one to suck on under my tongue. Then he gave me a shot in the ass. Good times. I mean, uh, I barely remember the thing. I, I, you did a radio. You drove like that last night, and you did a radio show. In well, Drew, who says I got to remember how I drove the night before? Does that make me a better driver if I somehow remember how I drove? It just I know where I'm going. Oh. You kidding me? I've told you. I've, I've circled the globe loaded, Drew. I mean, not all at once. I mean, you have to, you know, string it together, you know, to the AM, PM, and back times uh, 10 billion times. It's a great yeah. message. So it's a great message. Yeah. Well, look, here's all I'm saying. You kids can't handle it. Oh. But uh, oh Papa Carroll over here is a heavyweight. Oh my I told God. my doctor. I said, listen, my wife... Has uh, one one of those uh, one Benadryl. of those one of those teas one one of those like like a half a hibiscus tea and she collapses in the living room, keels over, yeah. keels over, heart stops. <laughs> Not me. You give me uh, give me a couple of Vicodin, a couple of Bloody Marys, and I'm doing fine, no problem at all. Yeah. Well. So let's juice it up. And he did. God bless him. He listened to me like a good doctor, not like you, Drew. And I'll just say, you were a hell of a lot nicer, so it's going to be a, it's gonna be harder for me to say no to you. I now, was out like a say. light. Well, what the hell? The last time I got the surgery done, I just sat there and stared at the ceiling and sweat bullets for three hours. Now you watch Towering Inferno. I don't even remember. I, the building wasn't even on fire when I passed out. I just saw the <laughs> beginning part where, <laughs> where uh, Paul Newman and Steve McQueen were talking in huge, huge collared shirts. <laughs> about about the color brown. Nice. Yeah, that's all they did. And then I fell asleep. O.J. was a good guy in that movie. I'm, oh, yeah, that's right. O.J. was right. Yeah. Listen, go go rent some of those O.J. movies, everybody. It's it's uh, great entertainment. The Jew's sitting there. He's the, uh, he's the head of security. He's a horrible, horrible actor. Yeah. Horrible actor. So it's, yeah. it, makes it, it makes it great. All right, we'll take a little break. Dr. Drew's over there in uh, Panama City, and we'll be right back. It's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Yep. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Dr. Drew in Panama City, Florida. Mm-hmm. Drew? Yes, sir. Yes, I am. Doing good over there, buddy? Yeah, real good. Uh-huh. Staying at... Where are you staying? Hotel we were at before? Who's the yapping? Yeah. Who's yapping in the background? I know. we got to be quiet here. Unacceptable. Who is I'm trying that? trying to get the computer up. Trying to get the computer up for you. 
Oh, what do I need a computer up for? This show's almost so you, over. So you don't have to read the uh, screen. You know, All right, what but a, what a challenge tell a computer guy to stop voicing his thoughts out loud in your microphone. <laughs> Does he understand the concept of radio? <laughs> well, I'm going to press uh, backslash, and I'll press the Apple button. Then later, I think I'm going to get a soda. Yeah, yeah. Diet? Eh, maybe I'll live a little... It's all got to be quiet, Drew. All right, yeah. All right, all right. All good. That's all good. Let's, uh, and the guy's got to be loaded, right? It's it's one thirty in the morning in your Panama Beach, right? Yeah, everyone here is loaded. All right. Let's uh, go to my tried and true method of uh, talking to whoever's on uh, Hold the Longest. Raven? Hi. You're 19? Yeah. You want to know how to let go of the past? You had yeah. sexual abuse? Um, yeah, I did, actually, with yeah. my grandfather. Grandfather. Oh. How old were you? How old Eight, nine? nine? How, How old were you when it happened? I was about, it happened between about the age of six and it stopped till about ten. Yeah. That's kind of yeah. Is he an alcoholic? Am I, is he an alcoholic? No, yeah. he was before I was born and then he quit for the family. Quit, wow. quit, quit booze and put down the bottle and yeah. uh, picked up his granddaughter. Yeah, Oof. exactly. What a fantastic chap. Yeah. It's one of the, one of the risks of people not... Getting into recovery, you know what I mean? Just going ahead and uh, just quitting, trying to stop. Yeah, because there's a lot of a lot of consequences to that that people aren't sort of. It, yeah. It's hard to predict what people are going to do when they just try to white knuckle it. Right. All right. Um, my question is, is, is he? That, do you still talk to him? Um, yeah, actually, I do. All righty. It's like kind of really hard because I haven't told anybody. Yeah. You know, I mean, actually, I actually got the courage to tell my dad this past week. Mm -hmm. And they're like gonna have a talk or whatever about it. Oof. Yeah. So like. <laughs> Oof. But the thing is that like my dad believes me because I'm his daughter, mm -hmm. but it's kind of hard to believe because that's his dad. Oh. So like they, he looks at everybody in my family looks at him like, oh you know my dad's so great you know and everything and it's really hard to, you know. To accept it. Yeah. Oh, exactly. it's, that's that's tough. Yeah. Yeah. It is. yeah. How do you feel about people not believing you? Um, actually, like, I told my mother about it because she's been in the same situation I have. Shocking. Another gran great-grandfather yeah. of mine. Shocking. Yeah, shocking. Yeah, so, like, and, but the thing is is that she believes me, and I guess my dad and her, like, tried to talk about it a few years back, yeah. but uh, my dad didn't believe it at the time. I guess he just wanted to hear it from me. Yeah, everybody uses this didn't believe it phrase quite freely when it comes to this stuff. I, I, yeah. I really don't think it's quite didn't believe you. It's didn't accept it. Didn't yeah, want to believe it. Yeah. yeah didn't didn't want to believe it. it. Didn't want to deal with it. Uh -huh. But I'm sure there was a part of him, especially knowing what your mom has been through, uh, that yeah. believed it. Okay, and this went on for a number of years. Uh-huh. And what kind of sexual abuse? I mean, um, uh, I like grabbing me, touching me, you know. But he, he didn't have intercourse with you. No, he didn't. No. All right. That that would probably you know. Yeah, and it, is he me a lot. is he married still? Yeah, he's married to my grandma. They've been married like forever. Oh really? Like what, forty mm -hmm. years or something? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. God bless him. God bless him. You don't hear about uh, that that often anymore. Yeah, actually, okay. like fifty maybe. <laughs> That's wonderful. I hope he dies. Yeah. So like, my dad won't tell my grandmother. You know, nor anybody else of the family, but he is going to warn him that if it does happen does your, again. Does your mom know about this? Yeah, my mom knows. But see, oh, my dad right, and my mom that. are split up. Oh, boy. Mm. So, like, I mean, they hate each other to the fullest. Like, they they uh -huh. don't like, yeah. none of them, my dad won't go to my wedding when I get married. When are, you getting, when are you getting married? Oh, no, I'm not going to get married anytime soon. Well, it, but, all right. Well, this why, why is he, well, by the way, why is he announcing this uh, yeah. years I, I before your marriage? You know, like, I know my dad would come around, you know, because he's he's really, like, he's helping me now with a lot of things. Yeah. Like, you know, trying to get my life together, because I just really got my high school back in January, my high school diploma. Mm -hmm. Well, that, that's what I want to hear more about. What's been going on in your life? What what has been the effect of all this family chaos and abuse? What, what What's yeah. happened with you now? Well, actually, like, I'm a collector. I'm a debt collector. Mm -hmm. So I have a job, but I don't go to school yet. I'm not just ready. I don't want to rush into something. I'm not but how about, you, how about your relationships? Are you able to have oh, relationships? Um, yeah, actually, I've been in a relationship with this guy for nine months. Yeah. And I fell in love with him, like, the second month. Actually, no, I won't even say I really fell in love with him. Like, I really started liking him by the second month. <clears throat> you know, like, I, I was really into him yeah. at that time. But the thing is, is that ever since I was, like, 14 till about now, for the past, like, five years, see, I'm, I'm very codependent. Yeah. And I don't yeah, know, I bet. you know, like, I don't know if what happened with me and my grandfather, like, affected that. 
Yeah. Like, I'm very codependent. And, like, for the past five years, I've only been single for, like, a month top. Yeah, yeah. I've always had the, somebody. Yeah. And the guys, you, the guys you get involved with, are they alcoholics or abusive You know or what? Like, okay, like, about a year and a half ago, I used to be in a crystal mess. Sure. Oh, boy. And, and Listen. Yeah. All right, all right. Well, let's just stop right there. Why don't you be the first person in your family to get involved in recovery? Yay. Because in, in the pro, yay, yay. Yeah. I'm going to go to recovery. Yay. yay. I want to go to recovery. Yeah, yay. Yeah, I yay. I, I want to get a chip. That. Yay. <laughs> yeah, like but, the thing is that I took, I went to a, like AA meetings and stuff for that. Yeah. yeah. Like I went to all kinds of meetings because I knew I was, you know, I had a problem with it. Right, so right. I went to meetings and like it'll be a year in May that I haven't done anything. Right. And, you know, but I use like other things. Yeah. All right, listen. There you go. Right. An honest program of recovery includes putting no substance in your body. It, you don't work with a sponsor, do you? No. I put yeah. it on hold, but Get please. a sponsor. True. Do the steps. I've been, the I've been here for eight somewhere. years. You've asked people 375,000 times whether they've been working with a sponsor or not, and the answer is always no, so just say no. Yeah, no no sponsor, no treatment. And so, look, I, it's great that you moved in that right direction, but let's really let's let's get it going here. Let's actually get involved in recovery. Get the sponsor. Stop doing drugs, get sober, and a lot of the codependency stuff will sort itself out in the process of recovery. A lot of the abuse issues will be dealt with. Most these days, you know, you know, most people getting into recovery have a trauma history. Yeah, it's just very, very common. <clears throat> All right, recovery and don't get pregnant. You know, I was having this fantasy about uh, you know I like to think about uh, just calling in airstrikes on certain houses, taking yeah. out the whole house. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That house I was picturing more flamethrower. Uh, Do you know what I mean? Yeah, you want to leave nothing behind. I'm standing in front with a big flamethrower. Grandpa runs out with a cardigan on fire, screaming. You know what I mean? I give him another another shot of the gasoline just as he's oh, uh, heading down the street. Good times. Uh, don't, you just, uh, don't you just want to... I, I don't know. You know what I mean with these families with everyone yeah. who's molested and everyone who... Mm. Grandpa doesn't do good. Go, go, go. Don't we just don't we start burning people alive? We start cleaning up this uh, roach nest of a society we're in with all these guys are banging away on their granddaughters. You know what I mean? We just yeah. did a little vigilante justice. Yeah, nothing, nothing wrong with that. Thank you. All right. What about this girl they found? So yeah, what, smart what girl. I, I, yeah, what happened exactly? I, I, I don't know. I, I, I think she got, like, uh, Stockholm Syndrome or something. She was... Hanging around with her abductor, and they she was like wearing a burqa, and they were crisscrossing. Uh, they were I don't know, they were in Colorado, and they would go out shopping, and she go out marketing and stuff. I, oh my God! I don't know how this works. Wait, which one? Which one is she? Which one? Is it Samantha Smart? It's, uh, it was one of the Smart. She's Elizabeth been, Smart. Elizabeth Smart. She's been missing for like a year. And she's a child. What's a well, she, uh, yeah, when she was abducted, I think she was she's like... 12. She was like 11 wow. or 12. She's in her 30s now. <laughs> I know it sounds weird. She's only been gone a year, but that's how it works. Wow. She had a couple of kids, divorced. She's, no. I don't know. She's like 12 now, and she, you know, th this guy sort of... I don't know who the guy is. I don't know the full story. I just know why everyone's glad she's back. Incredible. And uh, she's been gone a year, and I don't know, you know, I know if someone's been missing for, you know, a day... The, the chances of them coming back in one piece have probably dropped dramatically from the yeah. first couple hours. But uh, yeah, yeah. when you start getting into a year, yeah, I mean, uh, pretty much, pretty people are pretty much just look, looking for bones in the desert at this yeah. point, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, she made it back in one piece, and uh, God bless her. All right, let's uh, go back using my foolproof technique of uh, who's been on hold the longest and speak to Jessica, who's 17. Jessica? Hi. Hey. How are you doing? Good. How are you doing? Not so good. Oh, what's uh -oh. the matter, baby cakes? Um, okay, like, ev even since I was little, my parents, they, like, never allowed me to do anything with my friends. Mm-hmm. Like, um, they just, like, go to the park or, you know, just wherever. And and now since, like, we, we've had my um, cousin, we adopted her, and she's my sister now. And, um, How old is she? She's four. She's four, four huh? in April. What's your nationality? I'm Hispanic. Hispanic. Uh -huh. That's strict parents. Hey! Uh, Hispanic parents are like, either they're like super strict or they're like, uh, hey, mijo, go to the liquor store and buy me a pack of butts and uh, some malt liquor. And they're like, yeah, I'm four. Yeah, you'll be fine. Take the van. It's one or the other. But they can't, they can't figure it out, the Mexican parents, Drew. 
All right, you so, so? Very, pro- you know what I'm talking about. Parents very protective. No, that's that's the thing. Like they let they spoil her, and my my brother he's turn he just turned nineteen. Mm-hmm. He still lives here. He has a job, but he, he's allowed to do whatever he wants. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's nineteen. How old are you? She's seventeen. She just sounds thirteen. <laughs> see, Drew, it's confusing when he can't see the age, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. So. You're 17. Uh-huh. Everything was good in your life? Yeah. Never yeah. got never never got molested or anything? No molestation, no... Well, yeah. but look, a four-year-old, you're, you're, okay. you're jealous that there's a four-year-old in the house. And it's natural you have a, sort of a sibling rivalry, but of course they're going to treat a four-year-old different than a 17-year-old. Yeah. yeah. So what you may see as spoiling may be precisely how you were treated when you were four. Probably, yeah. Now, a 19-year-old obviously will have more privileges than a 17-year-old. And what I think you're having to deal with is that there's sort of an implicit sexism in your family where the male is treated differently than a female. Even though you guys are close in age, he's given a lot more freedom and allowed to do stuff, and they're sort of scrutinizing you all the time. Yeah. But and that's not necessarily fair. Yeah, it's not fair, but... Uh, can't you see it as your parents being sort of protective over you and caring for you? Well, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of bad stuff in there, but, like, I've never done anything. Like, right. No drugs, no alcohol. Okay. Did well, you listen. one of those big parties when you were 16? No, I mean, I was allowed to go, but I just never really... No, 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 no. You didn't hit that big, uh, that big, it's, it's, it's like, um... Coming it's out like party. A, it's like a bar mit, it's a bat mitzvah, yeah. Yeah. except for with a pinata. You were 16. <laughs> You know, I didn't have that one. No. I thought the uh, the little Nina's had that in the Hispanic oh, culture. Oh, was it Quinceanera? Yes. Okay. Oh no, I never had that. Yeah. Well, thanks for uh, knowing what Drew was talking about eventually. <laughs> yeah. Isn't, All right. Wasn't there? Isn't there some law that they have to have that? No, there's no law. It's like a tradition. It's well, yeah, what is it? Is it? People that, well, shut up, Drew. Is it 15 or 16 it's or 15? 15. Yeah. Yeah, but Drew, you hang around with those rich. Uh, Pasadena, no, no. Mexicans. On, on, on the contrary, I hear about people who ha- don't have a pot to pee. Ah, and, you're made. And, and they uh-huh. save for these things, these uh, events. All right. Well, listen, Jessica. Yes. You're uh, you're not getting in trouble. You're doing okay in school, right? Um. All right. Yeah. Not a great student. When <laughs> when you get out of school, when are you going to be out of school? In about four months. Four months. What are you going to do? I plan on going to college. Yeah, oh. but then, wait a minute. That's just more junior college, and then you just no, live no, at home. No, no, junior college. I plan on going to um, UOP. UOP? Yes. University Pacific? Um, I haven't really thought of anything yet. Yeah, What's but UOP? is it is it University of Pacific? Yes. Okay. I think she saw I said anything specific. Oh, yeah. I think. Did, did, you, did you get accepted to uh, Pacific? Um, I haven't heard anything yet. You think they're just going to contact you, or maybe you got to send them a letter or something first? Oh, no, I did that. I'm I see. I'm waiting for it, yeah. Okay, but you may not. What's your GPA? Um, 4.0. Oh, 4.0. Ooh. You're doing yeah. good. What would yeah. you do on the SATs? Um, 1350. Very not good. Not at all. And that's, wow. like a, that's like a 1600 with the cultural bias in those tests. <laughs> yes, oh, Mr. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. All right, so I know because I'm Italian-American, Drew. That's why I had difficulty with those. Oh, my God. At the airport today, one was wearing an FBI, a bunch of FBI paraphernalia. And I said, really? And she goes, yeah, it means full bl- full-blooded full Italian. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're the worst. All right, so, Jessica, you go off to University of Pacific. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you, uh, g- and, and until then, you sort of, I'm sorry, but you have to, I mean, you can tell your parents, listen, uh, I'm a good kid. Stop treating me like I'm a bad kid. But I don't think you're going to get past that. I no. say go off to college, and uh, that's when you start the dope smoking and the lesbian oh, for action. Sakes. Well, you just go off to college. Every, here's what everyone has to do. Mind their P's and Q's if they have those kinds of parents, and then go far away to college, all right? Yeah, it's, it's a reasonable plan. I got recruited by University of uh, Pacific to play football when I was in high school. Yeah. Yeah. I'll bring you one of those letters one day, Drew. I'd love to see it. Yeah, it's good times. Good times. And you know who went there? University of Pacific? Uh, Christian Okoye. Nigerian nightmare. I can tell oh. you. Uh, I can tell you Brian knows that. Huh. All right. Let's uh, take ourselves a little break, and we'll be right back. Hey, everybody. It's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. 
Dr. Drew's in uh, Panama City, Florida tonight because yeah, quite an exciting, vehicle. eventful night, huh? Yeah, but you're, and, you're, you know, it's, it's it's bizarre. When when we were we were struggling to get this thing up and running, huge electrical storm going. Really? I mean, like 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 a like a tempest at sea trying to trying to get through this. Kind of kind of nice to have a little weather though, huh? Real nice, yeah. All right, all right. So let's. Uh, and get, you're feeling better. Yeah, I think my jaw's swollen now, but uh, I do feel do feel a little better. Joe, thank you for asking. Joe, you're 17. Yeah, what's up, guys? Not much. Hey, Joe. Well, I got a problem that you know I've been dealing with for a while, but you know I'm thinking that it's really getting important now, just because my health and stuff. Uh, since I was about probably 11, I've been a little bit overweight. You know, I've been chub- chubbing since I was like two, probably. Mm-hmm. But like I've been, you know quote-unquote fat since I was like 11. Uh-huh. Uh, not early, you know, like obese. You're fat. True, please. How about your family? Is everyone kind of overweight? Uh, yeah, actually. Um, like heart, that's the, that's the thing I'm talking about. I was like, my, my grandpa died of heart disease. Um, he wasn't overweight, but it just, you know, runs in the family. But and my parents are both a little overweight. Um, yeah. But it, it's not really, you know, I keep up you know, at school and stuff. I keep up running with people and stuff like that. It's just that, you know, it's starting, you know, I started working at a fast food place. Ooh. And, oh, uh, boy. Yeah. How much do you weigh? Uh, about 220. How tall are you? 5'9". Right. And well, it's, like, starting to go up now. All right. And it's, like, I, I, I keep trying to lose All the right. weight. All right. Well, look, you, you're going to have to just do exercise. a disciplined diet and exercise. Can you exercise? Well, yeah, I exercise all the time. You know, I work out, all this stuff. But the thing is, though, is I, I, I'll consciously try to, you know, lose the weight. But, you know, after about two or three weeks, it's not exactly motive. It's like I have the motivation to do it. Right. It just kind of dies off. And I don't know right. why yeah. that's happening. Well, well, look, I mean, here's uh, I'll put them on hold. Yeah, that, that's in the nature of these kinds of things. That's why people say never say diet. You have to just change your lifestyle and it become a way of life. Yeah. And, and look, it's uh, some, some people eat whatever they want. And here's what I'm saying. Would you agree with this, Drew? Yeah. There's a segment of society that is sort of where they should be. It's like you eat this much, you work out this much, you have such and such a diet, you're where you should be. Either you're fat, you're skinny, whatever it is, you deserve it. That's yeah. where you're at. Okay? Then there's a segment of society that doesn't seem to eat all that much, yet gets fat, and there's a segment of society that seems to eat all the time and whatever they want and stay skinny like Dr. Bruce with, yeah. the, uh, with the 12 sugars in his coffee and not batting an eye. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm seeing he's, the guy's all nose and Adam's apple, and he's putting 12 cups of 12, 12 sugars in his cup of coffee at 11 o'clock at night. So, sounds like Joe and, and Drew, you show me a kid who's fat at 15, and I'll show you a kid who just has a natural capacity to put weight on. Probably, there's sort probably, of two, probably. There are, two, there are two common versions that I see. One is it's just their genetic hand. The whole family's kind of la- that same body type. Right. Another, though, is kids that have been abused or traumatized. They use food as a way of sort of comforting themselves, and they use it the, the weight as a way of pushing people away. Right. Right. And then we see that with women more than men. Yes. All right. But uh, Joe over here, who's been a, a husker, his, basically his uh, whole, whole adolescence, yeah. uh, has probably got a, a natural capacity for this and they're going to go off about the christy brinkley videos and things yeah well yeah, all you got to do is get one of those videos and you can see how to lose weight yeah, yeah you can, be, you you can be attractive too otherwise you're lazy yeah yeah that's really we really do abuse fat people but it's so fun so here's the deal joe you're gonna have to work a little harder than your average guy but all i'm saying is is whenever you look at somebody and you say well, wow, where'd you get those calves, or where'd you get those forearms, or how do you stay so fit, or why does your waist look like what it looks like? You might as well just ask them why their eyes are blue. Yeah. yeah everyone right. loves to give a good answer, but the reality is is people just are cut in certain shapes, and that's the uh, the long and the short of it. Yeah. I, I swear to God that's the way it is, and I wish exercise made a bigger difference. Oh, but if, if there were one thing to point out that can make a substantial difference, particularly for men, it is exercise, though, right? Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, I, Drew, I've asked this before, and I'll ask it again. How come my buddy, the Wheeze, who's the laziest uh, pot smoker I know, who never done a, so much as a push-up in his life? I've known a guy for 25 years. He doesn't own a pair of tennis shoes. He yeah. takes his shirt off. Looks about the same as I do. 
Well, Looks the same as anyone else. Nice. Yeah. He doesn't, he doesn't smoke pot anymore. He stopped, right? No, but here's the bottom line. Uh, our phone screener, Brian. Yeah. Brian exercises. Brian coaches. Brian looks after himself. Brian hits the gym uh, now and again and does his thing. Uh, Weeze looks better with his shirt off than Brian does, and the Weeze has never done anything his entire life. Or how about Chris, for God's sakes? Well, don't uh, forget about forget about my other buddies, Chris and Ray, who Ray has to yell at people that he doesn't work out when they scream <laughs> at him, you've been working out. Are you on steroids? He's like, no, I don't work out. And they're like, BS. Yeah, so what is that? What's the secret to Ray? Uh, we gotta, we got to talk to his mom. <laughs> I, I guess the secret is smoking cigarettes, drinking beer, and watching a lot of porn on bootleg cable. That evidently is the key to uh, to a good physique, according to my buddy Ray. I mean, if you just studied his physique, yeah, and his behaviors, and his behaviors. You look at you look at him with his shirt off, and then follow his behavior. Ah, <laughs> long hours, lots of fatty foods and starches, and plenty of bootleg porn on cable. Think of the video, the the video he put together. Yeah, just. Ray sitting around smoking, what? watching the Spice Channel and eating a donut. Fantastic, son of a bitch. All right, Drew, am I right about this or am I right? You are right. All right, what's the key to success? Uh, get your parents together. That's what the key is. We'll be yeah. back. can enjoy this the song now unimpeded drew you still there i'm here all right there buddy boy you can be calling the cell phone we got stuff to talk about yeah we do indeed. we're gonna start with your attitude and my attitude for god's sake i know that's just the kind of attitude i'm talking about so until next time this adam yes, corolla for yes, sir. yes sir for dr drew saying mahalo i want to go to recovery yeah, but, yay yeah, I yay i want to get a chip yay <laughs> This has been Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Ann Wilkins Engel. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.